You know what, Em? Working here isn't so bad. Senior researcher Carly Gonzalez noted. Senior researcher Emily Say looked at her. What makes you say that? Carly put together some of her mega block figurines while having snacked away at the Skittles. I mean, yeah, the work's hard, but the pay is good. The working conditions themselves aren't bad, and this break room is the best! She crammed a few more Skittles into her mouth before continuing. I mean, candy and nickel? This is the best! Emily stifled a giggle, watching Carly barely containing her easily excitable nature. Carly, you realize those are mega blocks, right? They're not actual Lego, more of a ripoff series? Carly stuck her tongue out at her before the watches began to beep. Ah, uh, back to work then. Carly placed her figurines and her creations near the skittle jars, and she hopped off with Emily back to her station. Annoyingly, SCP-387 was nearby, and Carly did not read the part about mega blocks. Jack felt something was off in the air. He has felt his feeling before, perhaps in a past life, but now the feeling is stronger, like a temptation, an unrighteous urge calling to him. Something horrible was beyond the great crystal tower of rainbow warps, something landing there with the force of a pouncing cat, and it was slowly beckoning to him, calling, no, raging at him to come to complete his calling. His mind went blank as he began to go berserk. The fortress monastery of the Inward Halo chapter stood proud, and its corner of hive skittles, known as the locals as Bloxville, the space marines of the revered chapter regularly interacted with the town populace, a call back to the hollow lineage to the salamanders of old. Terminator chap then Dionys sat at his fountain, preaching to the gathered children about the importance of faith, about the importance of the belief in the Emperor, when he heard a mother shriek in the distance, and a police motorcycle crashing into a pole. The children, all curious, began to wander towards the sound of that horrible noise. Dionys, the hundreds of wars having tempered him, immediately called for his brother's aid, empowered as Corsius before marching over, the servos on his suit carrying his impressive form over to the crash site. The gathered children and officers moved aside for the chaplain. As he approached the site of the crash, expecting to find a woman merely hit by the out of control vehicle, such was tragedy in a large hive, he assumed. His armored fist casually picked up the damaged motorcycle, and he felt unholy limbs touch his armor. The motorcycle carried the remnants of Jack, horrifically mutated by the powers of chaos, tempting to lash out at him. With contemplative ease, Dionys stomped down on the spawn's head, ending its pitiful life. Before he could look up, he saw the horrors of the warp spewing its bastard creations all over Bloxville, the rampant signs of corruption making its way through the streets. Who dares to fire with the sanctity of this hive? His ancient voice, magnified by his armor's force boosters, was enough to cause a few officers to fly, hefting his corsius and his storm bolter. He stood in front of the milling wave of mutants, banging his fist against his chest. Face me, wretched scum, and I may grant you your absolution in death. The mutants screeched and rushed him as one, while Dionys rushed forward, his corsiers alight in a killing blaze. Carly, what did he do? And look in the break room in sheer horror at the Lego firefight taking place. Carly, along with the researchers Harris, Jordans, and Jays, looked into the room with the same level of horror matching Emily's face. I was just burning with mega blocks. I didn't know this would happen. Harris laughed. I guess someone didn't read all the paperwork. He watched them as a mini freak hit the glass, its individual components shattering as if the person hit the force field at Mark 10. Well, this is an our mess, so you have to deal with it yourself. Carly's face dropped. Fine, fine, stupid seniors. She donned her goggles and grasped an odd handle. 
her clipboard ready to shield her from stray projectiles. It was cleanup time. Taste, not turns, dust, chaos, trash! Terminator Chop Indianus lifted his cautious overhead and brought it down with the Empress Righteous Fury, utterly destroying the mutant's head. Beside him, Brother Captain Adaris swung his hammer around, launching a nearby car at unholy speed and destroying a swath of incoming mutants with the impromptu projectile. As the civilians around them led the battle, those two imposing marines alone held the main road leading to the Crystal Tower, where the mutants were coming from. Undeterred by the sheer numbers against them, they held their stance, awaiting the next tide of felt to come so that they may cleanse. However, all became still, the mutants ceasing their motion, while Brother Captain Adoris and Chaplain Dionis also frozen in time. Chaplain, the enemy has come upon us. The magic of the warp held us still. However, Dionis felt something different. He looked at his Cassius, its holy field still alight. No, Brother Captain, he clarified. The enemy is not here. Instead, our Emperor has come to protect that which is his. As they were held still, holy hands began to descend from the heavens, taking the mutants up and utterly destroying them. Adoris and Dionys could only simply watch with undisguised awe as these hands took the mutants apart like blinding beams of lightning, striking the enemy wherever they stood and cleansing the hive of their incorrigible corruption. As quick as the hands took the enemy, it brought back those who were overcome, those who were unfortunate enough to have been overtaken and forcibly walked. As the hands finally stopped the grand cleansing, one of its fingers reached down and gently stroked the honest on the head. The hand finally withdrew as the overflowing presence left. Both space marine officers felt the motion return to their bodies and their power armor spirits finally obeying their wills once more. Chaplain, praise be to the Emperor, for he forgives and protects. Adoris lifted his hammer high in praise to their savior. Dionys, however, was a bit more off-kilter, still mentoring recovering from having been presently blessed by the god Emperor herself. Surely the Empress has more taste than those hot, Pink nails, correct? The five researchers finally put the mega block away, seeing it in its container. Carly sighed. That was such a pain in the ass separating each piece. You have to be sure, otherwise they would continue to act up, commented Harris. M looked at the bustling city once more, only to see. Carly, look! All five looked, and Carly just about passed out from the sight. The chaplain, she touched, had commissioned a giant golden brick statue of her, and the minifigs were giving it worship. Emily sighed. I think you won the office bidding pool this month, Carly.